March is Nutrition Awareness Month, and today we're going to talk about the importance not only of eating healthy for your appearance and overall feeling, but also as a cancer preventative. So happy to welcome Dr. Jeff Mullins from CHI Memorial's Chattanooga Urology Associates. Good to see you this morning. Thanks for having me. So you've been on the show many times before. We've talked some specifics about prostate cancer, uh, but this time you want to keep the conversation broad because what we're going to talk about this morning applies to everybody, men and women. Right, it applies to men and women and basically all cancers. Just we want to talk about lifestyle modifications, natural ways to prevent uh, cancer when you do get cancer to make your outcome as good as possible with that cancer. Okay, these are, many of these things are uh, recommendations that we've heard before, but they always bear repeating. Mm -hmm. Diet, exercise, and stopping smoking cannot be overstated. Exactly. They actually estimate that about 20% of cancers are related to lifestyle factors in which are potentially modifiable. So maintaining a good weight, eating an anti-inflammatory diet, exercising, not smoking, limiting alcohol intake. These are all things that everyone can do to really minimize their risk of having cancer. When you say an anti-inflammatory diet, can you explain that a little bit more? Yeah, so what I tell my patients is you go to the grocery store, if you stay around the perimeter, mm -hmm. you'll always sort of do well. Basically, fresh fruits and vegetables, lean meats, actually the more fish you can eat, the better off you, you'll be. Um, whole grains, limit processed foods, limit sugars. Those sorts of things are bad for your weight, bad for your heart, and bad for you getting cancer. Once you begin to be a label reader, mm -hmm. uh, it's amazing how much sugar is hidden in foods yeah. that we don't even realize. Right. So again, keep to that perimeter. Okay, but then as you're perimeter shopping, put some specific things in your grocery cart because when it comes to, is it prostate cancer yes. specifically, uh, word that you may have heard about taking certain vitamins has proven not only to be not helpful, but possibly harmful. Right, so all the studies looking at vitamins for the prevention of prostate cancer or the treatment of prostate cancer have all been either neutral or bad. So going to a store and buying expensive vitamins does nothing and may hurt your, your chances with prostate cancer. Things that have good evidence for helping either treat or prevent prostate cancer um, are lycopene or a glass of tomato juice per day, uh, a glass of pomegranate juice, and green tea. And keep in mind, these aren't ways to treat prostate cancer. Mm -hmm. These are things that you can do in addition to conventional treatments to help improve your odds of beating the disease. Are those, since those are specific to prostate cancer in terms of prevention, are they still good rules of thumb for other types of cancer as well? I mean, would it be a good just procedure to begin to drink a glass of this every day regardless of well, your health? All those things are anti-inflammatory that key things. word again yeah so inflammation is the is a, a root cause of a lot of cancer so you're certainly not going to increase your risk of cancer by doing those things and okay. they may, you may help you mentioned the screenings that's mm -hmm. always so important uh, we've been talking a lot this month about colon cancer mm -hmm. on the show let's talk about screenings for prostate cancer what's recommended age-wise so in an average risk person someone who has no family history uh, we usually start around age 55 and every year or two and they say stop around 70, but a lot of really healthy 70 year olds actually benefit from screening. So it's an individualized approach. If you're a high risk patient, either you're African American or you have a positive family history, typically start uh, a little earlier, typically around age 50. And with kidney cancer, we don't talk about that one much. Is that something that you're screened for or do you not know it's there until you begin to see signs? The incidence of kidney cancer is actually pretty low, so widespread screening would not be very cost effective. Mm -hmm. So if you ever notice blood in your urine, you ever have uh, flank pain, that sort of thing, uh, those are signs that need to be uh, evaluated by your primary care doctor and if appropriate, by a urologist. Do you have a sense in Chattanooga, are we becoming more and more healthy? Are we taking heed of the advice that we're hearing or is it still a, a stagnant problem we have? I think we're getting better and better. Chattanooga is a very active city, mm -hmm. um, lots of uh, health food stores, that sort of thing, but there's always room for improvement. Always room for improvement. The great thing about your office is too, you can self-refer, correct? People can see you today and give your office a call. I believe so, Make yeah. their own appointment. Yep. So CHI Memorial Chattanooga Urology Associates is where you'll find Dr. Mullins. He just wanted to come on this morning 
uh, and have a chance to give you some notes to keep on your refrigerator when you're making that grocery list. Remember to shop the perimeter. The truth is he doesn't want to see you in his office. That's right, exactly. If you need to go, you'll find him though uh, at Memorial on Glenwood Drive. There's his suite number 780-697-0072. Thanks so much. Thanks for having me. We're back after this. Bo, 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 bo,